so welcome everyone again. Um, uh, my name is uh, Matthew. Uh, I'm a PhD student, so basically I'm not from the web uh, community at all. I'm mostly doing MATLAB, scientific stuff. So I came to the Elm realm, I would say, uh, because I wanted to do a um, user study, uh, just evaluating different kind of interfaces to do some image processing and things like that. So I needed a web page to do my user study so then people can access it. So I just say, yeah, why not doing it Elm? Because I don't really know JavaScript and I don't want to learn a lot of JavaScript. So yeah, anyway. So that's a bit of my background. Uh, the reason why I'm presenting how to use tests in Elm is not because I like it, <laughs> though <laughs> it's, tests are important. But uh, if you didn't know, uh, on the Meetup page, we gave a link. And actually, I, I could have presented a few different things. And it was the one that was uh, most uh, wanted, I would say. So maybe next time, uh, I will redo it the list without the testing. And you can choose whatever you prefer to which I can present. I mean. <laughs> okay. So about tests. First, uh, why do we want to test things? I will start with a, a quote that is on the official Elm website. So I let you read the quote. Impressive. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think it's uh, basically what uh, every organization trying to use it in uh, in a production is uh, thinking. When at at least if it's in the bound area of what Elm is good at, if it's outside of what Elm is good at, it tends to be a bit complicated. But if it's to do web application, simple web application, it's perfect. So when you see that, you say, okay. I don't need testing. <laughs> Everything works. No, uh, <laughs> no, any uh, I don't know runtime errors. Yeah, actually not exactly like that. But you still don't have runtime error. But we are whole human, so we make errors that are not types error, just logic error. So that's usually why you want to make tests. So, but a bit uh, step back from testing, especially testing. Um, from the user point of view, so you are a user, you want to use uh, Elm code from ev someone else. Um, these, I think these are the four most important things that you have to think about. So what can you do with the code that you are trying to use? Uh, how does it work? So is there a good documentation explaining how, how it's working? Is it reliable? So do they show some kind of bill or test status? Do you think you can base your own code on this one? And Eventually, if you like it and if you find that you reach some limits, can you contribute to this code to improve it or develop any other, I don't know, uh, functionality that you need? So this is a bit from the user point of view. And from the other point of view, the people that are building the libraries, uh, usually you are building the library some because it's useful or because it's funny. I don't see of any other reason. Maybe because you want to get rich if it's uh, <laughs> but I, I'm not sure that Elm is the place for now. Um, and you are uh, thinking about two things. Uh, is it reliable in a way that will other people trust your code you are doing? Or is it easy to contribute from other people? I mean, are you going to do it all alone every time? Or can you attract people to help you working on what you are doing? So especially for those two last things, uh, Testing is very useful. So I would say this uh, test uh, helps building both trust and a community because it helps people contribute to your project. OK, so now, uh, now that we know we want to do testing, how do we do testing? Um, I won't go into details about a lot of codes. Maybe I will have. I will add a few codes at the end, but yeah, mostly it will be experiences. Um, I wanted to mention this. 
So I've not done testing a lot uh, in my Elm coding, uh, but I've done a lot of examples. So I wanted to ask a question to the community. It's what are the best practices to make example for when you are creating a, a package? And this guy, uh, Noah, uh, the, this name is his uh, 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 username, I know. <laughs> um, it's known by, by his. Uh, nickname. nickname, yeah. Oh. Uh, this guy, uh, sometimes I don't understand this guy. He's like, uh, he wants to help everyone. Uh, he's probably the first to answer a uh, new user question on the, on the Elm uh, different way of communicating. But when you're doing something a bit wrong, sometimes he's here to hit you with a hammer and telling you, I know. <laughs> okay, so I had this question and all the answer was telling me, don't do examples, do tests. So uh, do tests in those forms. So if you want to add examples in your documentation, just use Elm doc tests. So it's like examples when you give the answer of the code you are giving in the documentation, but it will generate tests that you can check so that the documentation never go uh, and sync with the modification of your code when you are doing modifications. Uh, you want to have a test suit. So this is to test mainly the most important features of your code. And especially this is what is useful when you want peop other people to contribute to your code. And if you are views, you can even test the views. Like uh, there is a library, it's called Elm HTML test. You can test basic stuff. It's more complicated to, to test um, a lot of events elements when things happen after the others, but the basic uh, static views are easily testable in, with this framework. So basically, there is an Elm testing package for everything. Yeah. <laughs> so for the documentation, Elm doc test, for your main tests, Elm test, and for the view tests, Elm HTML test. And three of the three of those are based on this one, which is a community-driven package. So a lot of people have. What are the view tests? Uh, the view Elm HTML test. Uh, it's basically you you create a classic view, HTML view, and after you check with some functions that an element inside exists, that it has such propri propriety, et cetera, et cetera. I have a small example at the end. It's the last uh, slide, so you, if you still have a question after this, you can. Yeah. Uh, do you have any question, any other question until now? No, it's OK. OK. So here we come to the part where there is a bit of code. Um, so uh, you have already been introduced to the, uh, to the type notations of functions. So uh, I've been working with a guy that uh, is doing a lot of geometric stuff to draw uh, geometric figures in web pages. And there is this function that creates uh, a line segment uh, along an axis from one uh, point to another. So that's what this function is doing along. Uh, I think it's pretty str straightforward to see what it's doing. So you start from uh, the f first point that goes from the starting point, and you go to the ending points of the line, and it creates a segment. So this is the way you write documentation in your code. You, uh, I think the syntax is similar to Haskell. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, so the idea is that you describe uh, small things, uh, how what your function is doing, and then you add examples. And examples are just. Uh, um, when uh, indented, yeah, code. So if you write it this way, uh, with the three, uh, the three right angle thing, um, it you can generate doc tests with this. Uh, actually, the syntax is going to change uh, very soon, like tomorrow or something like that. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not going to be this anymore. It's going to be as if you write uh, normal code. So 
uh, this will be a normal code and this which is the answer of this will be like a, a documentation so simple line documentation starts with a two um, union uh, thing so dash yeah dashes yeah do you yeah. know why is this, is this syntax evolving? evolving? Uh, I think it's because this is the first syntax the guy uh, initialized w at when he started the project. Uh, I, th I think it comes from Python, or I'm yeah, not so sure. So the, the advantage of using the doc text syntax that is similar to other languages is that mm -hmm. you can transfer skills. Yeah, but the idea of changing the syntax here is that now, if it's changed, it will look exactly like uh, Elm code. So it will be Elm code okay. here but it can be interpreted and generate doc tests. Because if you remove this, this is just a call function in Elm. And if you add comments in front of this, this will just be a comment. So this can be executed exactly like this as an Elm code. So it's like more convenient. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's a convention that most people are using right now because this is quite recent and not, a few peop not many people are using it. So it's very simple to generate doc tests. Um, you have to install a few things from NPM, uh, which is the node package manager for JavaScript, if you are ever use it. So you have to install mtest, which is the thing that the old these three libraries are based on. Uh, we, you have to install mdocstest, of course. And then you just initialize uh, in some repository where you have your m code. Uh, it will create a test folder. And you create an elm.test.json file. And you just say which of your modules contains uh, documentation tests. And it will parse the documentation and generate files. Is there any module to like, detect it or generate it automatically? I don't think so. I know that elm um, test is working automatically. Yeah, so elm test is working really automatically. Fast, so, but I don't know whether that would maybe roll up into this later. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. but for now it's manual. Yeah. Yeah. So you run it like this, elm.test, so it will generate the different files that will then be used by elm tests. So this will generate this file that you test with elm tests. So elm test is the main tool. Okay, so how did I come to elm tests? So I was telling you that I'm doing some uh, image interaction stuff. So this is from a um, user study I did where we evaluate different way of showing things on an image and identify, we call this segmentation in the language. So the idea here is uh, people could just draw an outline around the thing. And if we wanted to do this user study completely unsupervised, we need to add some things to make sure people are not doing anything crazy with the outlines. So for example, there was uh, this uh, um, check that I have that the outline is not crossing itself because it means usually that people are doing bad thing. Uh, so uh, for doing all this, I was, doing, I was using the library of this other guy, which is uh, Ian McKenzie. Uh, his library is called Open Solid Geometry. Uh, it's mostly geometric stuff to the on 3D to manipulate. Right now, there is a, only an SVG rendering. Uh, he's working on a WebGL rendering also. And he has, I think, I've seen ports to Haskell, uh, maybe not PureScript, but I think he's doing PureScript also. Um, uh, how you say uh, Microsoft uh, F sharp, yeah. So a few things. It's very cool. So I use his library, and I saw in his uh, um, GitHub that he was looking for uh, implementing uh, intersection of different things like line intersection. So I. Uh, just ask him if I could implement it because I've already done it with uh, the um, outline things. And there started our discussion. 
So why do we need Elm test to do this? Uh, mainly because it can be complicated. You think that line intersection is relatively easy usually, but we are dealing with computers, not humans. So there are a lot of things that can, may happen, like um, uh, infinitesimal uh, errors in computing and things like that. So in a case like this, if you want your code to be reliable, like you want to make sure this point of this uh, part of different segments is always on the top or on the bottom, like it's very complicated to specify such a thing in a, in, in a language. So we had to make a lot of different things. And the way we did it is mostly, mainly by imposing different tests that he wrote, uh, we discussed uh, different things. So uh, uh, Ian wrote these tests. And he told me, OK, you can write uh, your code, but we will have to make sure all those things happen. So for example, uh, intersection is symmetric. So if you make an intersection of one segment and this and the second, it must be the same results that if you inverse the arguments, the first one become the second. So it's a lot of things, but you have to make sure that those things work. And it's not always very straightforward. So Elm tests. So as you mentioned before, Elm tests is uh, automatic. It uh, basically looks for every module that is in your test folder. So for example, in our implementation of the intersection of line segments, it was in a line segment 2 delm module. And it searched everything that is exposed. And everything that is exposed, it tries every test inside it. So the head of the file w in which you put the tests is something like this. So it imports a lot of stuff, the uh, library you need to use, and also those so th these are the library I need to use. And also those uh, three um, modules. Uh, the main modules is this one, tests. And um, those it works with uh, expectations. So usually, you, when you specify tests, you expect a result from uh, a computation. So you say, this computation should be this, or shouldn't be this, or should be a uh, more than this or less than this, etc. So all these happens in the expects module. And the fuzz testing is a bit different. Have you already uh, done first fuzzy testing? In, uh, who, who doesn't know what is fuzzy testing? Like, no? Uh, so just to recap, fuzzy testing is to um, uh, try different kind of configuration of testing automatically so that you don't have to specify every test manually. So for example, if you want to test that the sum of two ints is always the sum of two ints, you can make fuzzy testing and it will try uh, with weird values that you may not come up uh, uh, manually uh, to check that everything is OK. So it's just yeah to generate automatically. So property-based testing also. I think, I think uh. I'm not sure if that's what uh, it is, but I'll Google. Uh, I'm not sure either, because I don't test in my lab, so <laughs> 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 it mostly breaks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the a test looks like this. Um, so these are the two main functions that you will use. Uh, test the test. So it takes a description, and it takes an expectation. So this is just to say that just look at the expectation. And it generates test, a test. The test will be passed to the runtime Elm, and it will verify that everything works. And the further is uh, you, gen you use a further. So if one of your variables of your test is an int, for example, you will generate a further of an int. So it will generate different int values. Then the same as the test. So description, uh, the kind of things that you are generating for the test, expectations, and the test. So it looks a bit like this. For example, intersection is symmetric, so we have the same results. You start with a test.fuzz. So it fuzz two here, because you have two arguments, actually. So 
one segment, the second segment, the description, and then you expect something equal from the two segments. So you expect that the intersection of the first segment of the second is the same as the intersection of the second and the first. So it generates a test, and then the tests are automatically uh, run by the um, by this command on test with the folder with all the, your modules. So uh, you can set up everything in Travis. I will not explain everything here, so you have all the thing online. Uh, so you can set up and verify when people make pull requests on your code, something like that, that it automatically runs the test and verify that it didn't break anything. So uh, just so that you have an idea, so this simple intersection of two uh, segments, uh, it took uh, 124 lines of code, mostly because there are lots of spaces in uh, Elm. And those lines of tests. So tests are important, and don't forget them when you want other people to contribute to your code. Uh, so HTML tests to test the views, uh, as, as before. So it's basically the same thing. You have all those requirements. The, uh, you use the test thing, and you use HTML to generate HTML. So for example, this is a description of some tests, and here, you generate one HTML, so this part is the HTML you generate. You generate a div uh, that has a class container, and inside the div there is a button uh, with a text. S and then you test this uh, HTML you have generated. So it starts from this, then you have a different command like find the tag of a button and then verify that he has a property. In, uh, in general, it takes this form. So you generate some HTML view, and then you use query from HTML that transform the HTML message to something that is specific to the uh, library. And then it takes this uh, something specific to the library, and you can transform it, like verify that there, uh, there is an element inside, something like that. I uh, no, check for an element, or check for multiple elements inside. And then once you have done those checking, you verify a property of those checking. So, uh, the third type is verification. There are lots of different functions. So here we use the has verification that verify that something exists, but it could be anything else. You can check the library. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Do you have any question? Have you tried them? You said you haven't used them much. Have you tried them? Um, I've used the Elm test uh, library, basic library for the thing. And I've tried. Uh, this, uh, this afternoon. <laughs> how, how did you find the, the sort of feedback from your test? Is it uh, easy to figure out what is going wrong when, when your tests are failing, or how does, how does that part work? Yeah, I think um, it's when it's it's a bit scary at the beginning because it's it's a lot of code when you look at this. You feel like there is too much thing, and this is the simplest uh, example I found. Um, most of examples are too long to fit in this page and too long in line. But once you get the the idea that you want to compare things, I think it's easy because uh, when you run the the test, you have a, a recap. Um, uh, how do you say that? Uh, uh, it's formatted in a way that uh, I don't know, you know a file, uh, not a file, but you see in the terminal with all the green and red things, and it says exactly to you that uh, this test with the description you given isn't working uh, because uh, uh, you wanted those things to be equal, so this message will change depending on what you use it, and the first thing is blah blah blah, and the second thing is blah blah blah. And you have the seeds that generated this uh, wrong example. So you can uh, get the seed and uh, reuse this seed of uh, random values to check uh, that you have corrected the bug. And once you have corrected the bug, you just reset uh, the seed to be random and go again, uh, do some coding. So I think it's pretty straightforward when you get it. But uh, it took me something like one or two days to understand a bit how it was working, um, but after that, it's okay. Mm. Yeah. Any other questions?
question. I think the different uh, PD, uh, presentation will be available. So yeah, we'll probably put links. Or